Привет! Welcome to the Flick Lab. How is everyone? We have our new guest, Jana here. How are you, Jana? Uh, hi for everyone. Hi. Thank you so much. I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to, yeah. nice to meet everyone. Jana is based in St. Petersburg, right? Yes. And you are working in fashion industry. Yes, right. You are. And also I'm studying. <laughs> studying. Want yeah. to be a fashion designer. Like I said previously, a very busy girl. And we have also a very busy guy here. His name is Henrik, my co-host. How are you? Well, I have to come clean and confess that I'm properly hangover at the moment. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, honest question, honest answer. Well, just another day in the, the flick lab. So, <laughs> no problem. Oh. <clears throat> I myself... Woke up like two hours ago. This is probably the last time I will use digital alarm clocks. So next time it's going to be a mechanical clock that will bring like 120 decibels in the flat. Oh. Anyway, today's movie is Yolki, or how do you pronounce that? Uh, in Russia, we also pronounce it Yolki. 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 Yeah, the same. Okay, okay. This English title is Six Degrees of celebration actually a pretty good title i'm not sure how well it fits for the sequels because there's like four or five sequels at this point for the series and maybe they will tackle some kind of different topics in uh, russian culture during the new years who knows but uh, i believe this was also for yana the first time you saw this movie right yes currently right you are it was my first time to see it yeah Let's get to our feelings about those in a second. <clears throat> Jana, I have been a very nice guy for you and picked out a lot of very hard and controversial and uh, heavy topics for you. So, well, since you are studying and working, have you any thoughts about the current situation of Russian economy right now? So, yes, of course, because uh, uh, to tell the truth, just now I... Uh, if uh, we talk about internal politics, yeah, you can economy is um, the level is very low. Unfortunately, we have a lot of problems, uh, really uh, great problems concerning different sides of our life. For example, health, uh, our older people. We talk about uh, government payments for older people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also. Uh, if uh, talk about the uh, in the whole start uh, to be a little bit nervous so uh, we <laughs> we really can um, divide it uh, for example we can uh, talk about one topic for example about uh, older people yeah about yep. payments for all the people then we can uh, talk about uh, situation with ukraine and uh, a lot of sanctions and what do you prefer <laughs> to talk first yeah, yeah, it's a super big topic, but to pick something, how are these sanctions affecting your life? Are they affecting your life? Uh, so uh, if uh, talk about my life, uh, first, uh, it's my salary, yeah, because uh, just now the course of okay. euro on dollar not very good for Russians. Yeah. Uh, it's also concerning uh, price increases, yeah, because uh, if, uh, for example, uh, Four years ago or before this crisis, yeah, conflict with uh, Ukraine, yeah, I can uh, buy everything I want. Have choice, a lot of choice. To I can choose uh, this one or that one. Yeah, I can travel a lot, yeah, and uh, eat what I want and uh, go or any cafes or everywhere. <laughs> Just now, I also can do it, but uh, a little. Uh, the idea I get about. Ukraine is that the, like the eastern side, almost like 50-50 of, of the country. The western side, it has its Ukrainian identity clearly. But on the eastern side, you have, of course, the area which is taken over and the war is going on there. And do you get also the feeling that the, the people are more Russian-minded there? And they have more the Russian identity than the Ukrainian identity? 
so it depends. I, uh, at, if uh, talk about eastern part of Ukraine, yes, of course, so this part is much more Russian-minded, yeah, compared to uh, west uh, west side of uh, Ukraine. But um, as for me, I uh, can't understand uh, why this uh, conflict and politics uh, has such an impact on people, on mind of people. So I have a lot of uh, friends in Kyiv. Yeah, it's the capital mm -hmm. of uh, Ukraine. But, uh, uh, you know, you should know that uh, with such people, we never talk about politics, really. Yeah. It's um, not a good uh, topic for us. If we start to talk about it, uh, we also uh, have different points of view on this question. And some people uh, who live in Kyiv say that uh, the situation after coming new president, yeah, Prashenka, became much more better. But uh, if uh, we talk in the whole, the um, mm, People who live in east side, yeah, mm -hmm. it's Donetsk and other republics. I can't say that they uh, have really good life, really, because uh, they have uh, a military situation in these cities. And uh, if uh, we talk about economic, politics, money uh, on the government level, yes, uh, maybe it's um, uh, Russians have or Ukraine, yeah, have uh, their own aims. But uh, why people should uh, suffer from this uh, situation? Yeah, indeed, because it's hitting all the ordinary Russians who had nothing, nothing to do about anything, right? Yeah, they can only wait and, uh, I don't know, it's um, <laughs> uh, really such a term like survive. Really survive, not live, but survive in this situation. Yeah. How do you feel about the whole uh, overtaking of the Ukrainian regions? <laughs> like how I feel about it? Yeah. Um, as I think, of, um, I we uh, the uh, so uh, this uh, war starts because Russia take uh, the Crimea. Yeah. As for me, as we talk about uh, international rights and political contracts. Mm -hmm. I don't think that this was the uh, right uh, choice to uh, get uh, Crimea, yeah, to, yeah. to make it uh, a Russian part. Yeah? Yeah. But uh, if you talk about uh, people who live in uh, these parts, I think they want to, yeah. to, to be Russian people. Yeah? It's uh, two different points of view. First point, it's political. Yep, it's uh, military, political. Uh, so Black Sea, mm -hmm. it's a navy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If talk about life, ordinary people life. Yeah, uh, yep. they want to live better, but yeah. uh, they uh, unfortunately uh, there is not better life just now there in uh, this part of uh, Russia. I mean Crimea, because they have nothing. They don't have banks. They don't have uh, supermarkets like uh, Shan or I don't know Garifor or something like this. They have nothing. <laughs> I was in Yalta this summer, and it's really bad situation there. Okay, the way that you see the situation there is kind of how I have also understood the situation. That the, yes, the people are kind of more Russian minded, they are willing to join Russia, it's not not a big problem for them, at least for the majority of the people in that region. But however, taking over the territory just like that was against all kinds of international law. So yeah, but uh, if we talk about y Ukraine and uh, this conflict, yeah, I don't have any against Ukraine, really, U Ukraine people, mm -hmm. I mean, of course, uh, really, they are, have a lot of uh, friends uh, from this side, uh, but um, uh, it's just politics as usual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only uh, we, it's only take politics, but I think uh, that uh, from this situation, nobody wins. Yeah. Only uh, we have a new war, <laughs> international war. Oh, there was a really interesting discussion in Finnish in the Finnish governmental news agency or the news channel Ule. They were talking about Russia and. 
Russian mentality. There was some Russian sort of an expert from Finland, and he was uh, saying that uh, Russia always, uh, in a kind of a shared mentality, think that somebody is out to get them. Somebody wants to attack Russia. Do you think that that is the situation? That if you talk with your friends, are are they afraid of attacking Russia or something? So. Uh... I'm not afraid of it because uh, I think that uh, Mr. Putin, yeah, our Russian president, uh, will not allow to attack. But um, 21st century, I hope uh, we um, we need not to uh, make war. Yeah, mm-hmm. I hope that uh, our government in Russia or in Germany or other countries start not to make war but start to really communicate and to share their opportunities because every country their own opportunities uh, resource and uh, I think we should uh, go to this way not to a way of war. Henrik are you afraid of Russia? No. Okay. Uh, Precise and clear. It's kind of a like hard question to approach from the Finnish perspective, since well, there is quite a lot of uh, Russophobia in Finland and in the old attitudes. In uh, Finland, really, uh, yeah, there is a great Russophobia. Yes, in my circles, there are also people who are, if not afraid, they are just totally Russophobic. Yes. Uh, why? What, how they explain it? Why uh, such a uh, feeling uh, on to Russian people? Well, you know, it stems all the way from the Second World War and the sentiments from there that these people have, you know, inherited from their grandparents. And it's also about, of course, what the government in Russia is doing. And then they are kind of reflecting that on the entire Russia. But, uh, you know, if uh, I hope uh, that um, such a Russophobia only on political level, because uh, this situation, for example, I also don't like so our, yeah. uh, what to do our government, really, because we also have uh, a lot of problems from this situation. And um, I hope uh, your friends uh, only think uh, about it on political level, not on human level. Or yeah, it's well, concerning also human love. And they're not my friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry for such a question. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's kind of a, since you asked for it, it's kind of a tide in Finland, like, like it all stems from the political reasons and political, from his, yeah. his, his historical reasons, but at the same time, it has influence, yep, in the whole. Yeah, precisely. It, it can influence on how we approach people on a personal level also. Hmm, I understand. Because uh, nobody uh, should afraid Russian people. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, our <laughs> Mr. Putin, <laughs> but uh, Russian people, uh, you shouldn't afraid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and hopefully the attitudes will kind of a change now since there is going to be a generation change in Finland yeah. also. I'm actually hoping that that will be the moment that will change these attitudes towards yeah. Russia and Russian people. Also in Russia, I think there is a big generational divide, you know. Just a few years ago, there was reports about these huge protests against Putin and the government, and that was... Uh, very soon extinguished, but I think the sentiments stay there. And do you think the situation or the political, the people are not going to support this government in the next 20 years or so? You know? Really, uh, it will be a situation during the next 20 years or really uh, even five years. We really don't know. Mm. But I hope uh, that uh, all uh, so uh, the uh, Ukraine side and Russian side and uh, European uh, Union yeah, uh, have uh, the um, you know, compromise because uh, really each side, yeah, I mean people, really, really tired from uh, this war way of dialogue. Yeah? 
yeah. from sanctions uh, and uh, uh, even I, my brother and sister, uh, you know, uh, if we talk about Russophobia, for example, I live in mm-hmm. London. And uh, after this situation, my sister starts, if uh, somebody asks her, oh, where are you from, Nastra? What is your origin? Yeah. Uh, she ta- um, says that she's from Korea, not from Russia, <laughs> because of this Russophobic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is a big problem also in Poland, where I lived for three years. Mm. Near Poland, uh, our city is Kaliningrad. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, fin- uh, it's like uh, Finland and Saint Petersburg, I think. <laughs> Why they don't like I, I don't know. It's so complicated. It's about all about the politics, of course. I think uh, yes, this one. Hopefully. Anyway, okay, let's move on to the movie a little by little. Yep. Today's movie is about New Year's and New Year's celebrations around the whole country of Russia. So a little bit more, <laughs> less heavy subject than we were talking about there. <laughs> right, you are. Yeah. This is about a little girl in orphanage in Kaliningrad. Have you been in Kaliningrad? Unfortunately not, never, but uh, with great yeah. pleasure visit this city. Yeah, I have not been there either. And this little girl tells a lie to his friends in the orphanage and says that uh, his dad is the president of Russia. And of course, it's not true. But yeah. with using the six degrees of separation logic that this other orphanage guy tells to the girl, they are able to. Well, we will find out during this episode. But I believe everyone who is who is listening to this already knows the end result. So they are able to get this message to the Russian president, I guess. Or then it's just some New Year's magic, and he gets this information, or changes it the, the speech some other way. So in the news, the president has recently traveled to Yakutsk, Ufa, and Finland. And we will also visit those cities during the duration of the movie. Russia is split into nine different time zones. And the first city that we travel to is Yakutsk. And uh, this is about love issues, this one particular story. There's uh, uh, several directors, several writers, and all of them are working in their particular story in different parts of Russia, I believe. So this is pretty interesting, kind of unique take on how to build a story, how to make a movie, perhaps. It's very interesting. Yeah, I like this film. It's very kind movie. (laughs) Despite the politics and uh, other topics uh, concerning this film, it's very kind film. Yes, it is. Of course, it's very fantastical. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, also a lot of magic, you know. Yeah, many of the things don't make any real life sense, but actually that did not bother me during this movie at all. Because somehow there's a lot of moments where they have this setting in this movie somewhere and you just want them to do the most absurd or crazy things in this setting. And that's exactly what they do. Now, somebody could say that that, that is ridiculous and that's cliche or whatever. No, I feel like it's kind of fresh for me because it's nice to see them take full advantage of the surroundings in this film. All right, so for right you are, the plot of this film is really very interesting and the idea is uh, not a new idea, but uh, watch this film, uh, you don't know what the next moment will be. <laughs> yeah, well, or you do, or you or you are wishing for that. For example, well, this was a dream sequence, but there's a sequence where they are inside an airplane and you're just wishing that this guy will grab the other guy and throw him out of the airplane. And that's exactly what he did. And Concerning uh, it, this uh, situation, uh, I write uh, for myself the topic uh, prejudice, you know? <laughs> we mm-hmm. think uh, a lot and uh, don't know the real truth. <laughs> Uh, so this guy in airplane, yes, uh, they uh, thought uh, that uh, they talked about uh, one girl, mm-hmm. but uh, in fact they uh, have uh, different girls, yeah, b- uh, girlfriends, and uh, when they talk to each other in plane, one of uh, them think that his girl that the girl is being unfaithful. Yeah, 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 yeah unfaithful, right? You are to him. 
And uh, I think that is um, concerning Russian mentality that a lot of things we think a lot of, but in real situation, they are uh, really very different. Henrik, have you ever gone to Russia? Unfortunately, no. Okay. Uh, there has been plans to visit Russia, but... Henrik, uh, what city would you like to visit in Russia? Well, to give the cliché answer, St. Petersburg. Yep. Kind of um, naturally. I've been in St. Petersburg when I was about uh, 12 or 13 years old. It was a trip with my grandmother. I remember, Gary. I remember yeah. <laughs> you said. My old little story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was back in the year 2000. In the year 2000. Yeah, we had this organized uh, bus tour. When Putin started President Way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's been there for a long time, maybe the next 50 years. Yeah, so long, so long. We are just like, uh, we'll be like a Belarus. <laughs> so there is President Lukashenko. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope everything will go for the best. But uh, yeah, it was just like an extended weekend trip. And I enjoyed St. Petersburg. Of course, I was so young and I was so restrained by the bus tour. So we just went to the, basically, maybe the best restaurants in the region and all those boring things. So I didn't get like the, I think I didn't talk with anyone Russian, except some salespeople, of course, somewhere no. down the river. So, but uh, yeah, we went to theater as well. Had a good time. Oh, and si since then, I have not been to Russia, which is kind of shocking. Would be nice to pay a visit. Come, uh, come to visit, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely have to. I don't even know how the whole visa thing goes with Russia, but of course you have to get that, I believe, in advance before you go to the border. So there's always that. But in, you know, in European Union, you just go through the borders and no one cares. So it's easier than going to Russia. You have to pre-plan your trip to Russia. You really could come to visit. I'm really, really glad to see you. Yeah, we will have to organize that. So the first story that we are introduced to is actually indeed the Yakutsk area story. There's a lot of issues with, I believe, Boris. Boris uh, is afraid that his girlfriend has left him for someone else. And yes, this is the same story that happens in the plane later. So he finds the guy who is supposed to be uh, having something going on with this girl. But in fact, there is apparently nothing going on it's <laughs> really confusing actually because in the beginning you see that this girl is seems very strongly to be faking the cell phone going out and then this launches the whole operation of this guy and then in the end there's nothing nothing to it but it's funny yeah a really funny situation also thing um yeah then there is krasnoyarsk do i say it correctly at all Krasnoyarsk, yeah, Kari, right, you are Krasnoyarsk. Krasnoyarsk. Yeah. There's a taxi driver <clears throat> who has this dream to meet or be with this woman singer, I believe, Vera. Uh, yeah, the singer, you know, Vera Brezhneva. <laughs> okay, so it's a real famous person. Yeah, it's a real singer, a famous person in Russia, yeah, right, you are. <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes it even better. Do you like her music? Uh, no, I don't have any against her m music, uh, but um, if we talk about her voice, yeah, she's really a, a cute person, yeah, very beautiful person, beautiful woman. But uh, if we talk about uh, an artist, yeah, a singer, I don't think that she has a, a really strong voice. That's only my opinion. <laughs> Mm, but okay, as a uh, woman, yeah, uh, she is very beautiful. Some kind of a pop music, I guess. Yeah, she is a pop singer, Russian pop singer. Okay. Then there is the Yekaterinburg story. Around this region happens the story of the prisoner who escapes the prison and everything is forgiven when he comes to the mobile shop. And there we have meeting with this girl that uh, the prisoner has not met in a long time. and. The prisoner saves the day. Uh, the cop finds him somehow magically due to New Year's magic. 
in that shop and he is redeemed, he can go and not have his prison sentence. I don't think that uh, he is a criminal. He is, uh, in English, it is uh, the word uh, parasite. Tuniyadets <laughs> in Russian, maybe you know such a word. <laughs> but he stole the necklace, yeah? Yeah, uh, he was. Yeah, to survive. Yeah. Perhaps. But the situation is really funny. Having a shower, yeah, and uh, he uh, got uh, his clothes mm -hmm. to make an escape from this jail. Yeah, again, very convenient and fantastical. But yeah, it it's a very fantastic situation because uh, in real Russian uh, jail, it's an uh, unbelievable situation. <laughs> you can't do, do it. As I know, Hendrik uh, always loves the cliches, so <laughs> I'm already afraid of the answer what Henrik, Henrik is going to say about the whole construction of this movie. What is the cliche on this case? Yeah, Henrik, how do you feel about these convenient situations? <clears throat> well, I have to confess that I did not enjoy this movie as much as you did. <laughs> okay. To me, the conveniences, they actually kind of bugged me out uh, throughout watching this film. And much of the setups that the stories get, I thought were too simplistic. Mm -hmm. Simplistic, what do you mean? Maybe I don't know this. Uh, well, yeah, what I mean is the, the first storyline that we follow, which is the little girl telling everyone that her dad is a president. It's a situation that actually does not make any sense on any level. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a vain setup, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, if uh, you talk about simplicity, yeah, and uh, about not science, I think that uh, this film uh, uh, from the beginning, yeah, they don't have a, a big science in its plot. Yep, uh, it's only a funny uh, story, uh, funny uh, magic uh, situations. Yes, which uh, could be with uh, ordinary people in their life. Yeah, it's super lighthearted. Yeah. Maybe this is also some cultural thing. Maybe there's an overload of such movies in Russian cinema. So I can't comment if people are tired of these kind of constructions in Russia or not. But I did enjoy it. For me, it was something fresh after all the American stuff that we have been watching. Yeah, to me, on the other hand, this was surprisingly close to the American stuff, so to speak. This film you made? But it was... Yeah, but it was not that. This movie I, I like in the sense because it is never ashamed of being completely goofy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really kind, a lot of kindness in this film, really. And uh, you feel such a list of magic. Then there is a uh, city of Ufa. Ufa, yeah. Uh, Ufa. Ufa. Ufa, yeah. Ufa. Ufa. And uh, there is this incident with, again, love. It starts with a champagne bottle and that the man's secret lover takes from the shelves in the store. And then this woman witnesses via the phone call that her guy is having someone else. Yeah. But this actually, this affair was legit, right? Because in the end, she is happy with, it, is it her family? But this uh, affair is still happening. So also, uh, you know, in this situation when... Yule, uh, the name of uh, woman. This situation also we can see magic, yeah, because in real situation when you come on the road uh, and uh, there are a big car. In real life, uh, I think it will be bad. A car crash uh, with a bad result. But due to this situation when she uh, ran out on this road, this was a fatality for her. Due to this situation, uh, she uh, met her love. How do you pronounce it again? Yulia? Ah, the character. Yeah, Yulia. 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 The main character in this story. If you want to look for ridiculous things, Yulia's story might be the most ridiculous in the sense that she gets the call in the chain of the six degrees of separation thing. And she goes out of her way based on only that phone call to travel, what is it, 197 kilometers with a truck driver, risking her life and 
doing all of this because of a random orphan girl somewhere in Kaliningrad. So <laughs> really, really funny. And then Yulia burns the wrong piece of paper and she's so sad. Yeah, that she burned the uh, the other side. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it's also fatality because uh, this uh, piece of paper, yeah, was a rentgen... Uh, yeah, X-ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, you are. And after she uh, fell out of the car and also had a problem with your knee or your leg, and uh, in the end, find her love due to this uh, fatal falling out of the car. That's right. Then there is even more stories. There is one happening in is it Perm? Perm. Perm. Right, you are. Perm. 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 Okay. Yeah. There is a mountain skier and snowboarder. And they have this really bright idea to have some skiing and snowboarding. Oh, this is the funniest situation, <laughs> really. Well, but very yeah. funny. <laughs> if we talk about the characters, yes, uh, this um, uh, grand uh, uh, old woman, yeah. Uh, babushka. Ba- babushka, yeah, right, you are Babushka. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good... S- snowboarder? No, 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 she's not snowboarder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe guys are snowboarders, <laughs> but Babushka, no. <laughs> I like her very much. I saw her in a lot of Russian serials. <laughs> yeah, you enjoy seeing Babushka's crust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Carrying on. <laughs> then there is the city of Kazan. Uh, or... Kazan. 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 Uh, yes. there, there's a character, Kolia, I believe. This is one of the guys in the linkage of the separation, second guy. Then there is Tolmachevo, uh, Tolmachevo. flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flight and stare with the love issue guy. And there he finds out that nothing has been going on and there's the happy ending. And then uh, there's also, I believe it's happening in, in Kaliningrad as well. And this is it a cleaner guy, Yusuf. He stops by in McDonald's. Uh, yes, it's as I remember the last story. Yes. Yeah, he calls the Kremlin guy who is outside. Uh, I don't know what he was doing, uh, kind of pushing the snow away from the yard or something. But anyway, he just says that that's a ridiculous idea to contact the president, and he cannot contact the president, and then the link supposedly dies. So it's left as a mystery why the president gets the word that. He should change the New Year speech, but the right speech is right there at the end. So in the end, I think uh, if we talk about speech, uh, yes, it's also an unbelievable situation. But uh, I hope uh, that uh, the uh, New Year speech, it's uh, the ordinary what uh, president uh, talk to people. It's his ordinary speech. And uh, this uh, girl and others yeah, think yeah. that it was for her. Yeah. Jana, uh, what if I said to you, when you're angry, you're so sexy, would you get angry? <laughs> because there is this line in the <laughs> plane where the character says that uh, this comment that could be seen as very sexist, at least in uh, Finland. Uh, what do you think about that? Would you get offended if you heard something like this? So if uh, we talk about such a compliment, uh, I think uh, if, uh, in what tone this compliment will be said to, uh, will said to me, yeah? Say, yeah. and who <laughs> these compliments say to me. <laughs> right, that it makes depends. sense. Yeah, yeah, it depends. How did you feel about it in this movie? Was it uh, appropriate or kind of yucky? I think a little bit yucky, a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought so. But it's only my opinion, only my. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, most of the scenes are kind of like straight out of a dream. They're fantastically convenient meetings, being able to take revenge in delicious ways. Except, well, this particular one was in the airplane that he kicked the guy out of the airplane along with himself, I believe. At least that's in the trailer. It's really ridiculous, but it's in its, uh, let's say, blunt silliness. It's refreshing for me at this moment, at this time. And because it doesn't care about being silly, it takes a setting, uses it to 100% and just has plain old fun. Yeah, this movie, I think, uh, don't make your mind busy. You uh, watch, you have uh, fun, you have uh, 
a good atmosphere while watching this film, I think. Much good uh, yeah. light atmosphere. But I do understand the silliness aspect and how somebody could get his mood drawn down a bit watching this. It just depends on how you're taking it. So, But in my part, I would recommend Six Degrees of Celebration, made in 2010. Please watch it, please buy it, please rent it. And uh, have a nice new year via some Russian fun. So, Henrik, would you recommend uh, Six Degrees of Celebration, Jalki? On my end, I would not recommend Jalki. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I, 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 get, I do get exactly the points you guys are coming from. And I do see this magical touch in the way how the film handles itself. But then again, I'm basically on the completely other side. I would argue on every point. To me, this uh, Yolki did not work at all. The six degrees of separation theory is something that I've seen. Pseudoscience, of course, yeah. Put off in movies, but I- I've seen it done. Most of the storylines were too simplistic for me in the setup. It is an obvious goof and the characters kind of, a, in my opinion, react way too powerful for it to be any way believable or even logical, even in this movie's reality. And I never got the feeling that any of the sequences kind of went all out in the craziness. You can brought up the airplane scene where the guy throws the other guy out of the airplane mm-hmm. and they both end up in free fall. And well, to all our listeners, the big payoff is of that scene is the fact that, well, it was a dream sequence. It would have been great if, if it were completely true, of course. Yes, I agree. Yeah. So uh, I will, I think I agree with you, yeah, and give also uh, six points. This is very good film, a very light film, with uh, maybe a simplicity um, stories, yes, yeah, simplicity plot, but uh, I like it, uh, and uh, I watched this film with a great pleasure. Oh, I have only one moment I didn't like. I saw a lot of advertising, a very a lot of. I mean, a seven company, yeah, Aeroflot company, Eurosit. If we talk for its mobile uh, market, yeah, I think these moments I only dislike. For me, I also like the what I talked with my mom <laughs> this morning. It seemed like there's a pentatonic scale theme song for this movie. It's a piano song that I think uses five notes to make its point, to bring out this nostalgic feeling to the movie. And I've heard this used in several video games, especially Japanese. You mean uh, music? Music in this film? Yeah, it starts with this piano and ends with this piano, and I and I really liked it. It was a little bit cliche, so it wasn't really a tearjerker moment, but I like this kind of piano music very much. I could listen to it for hours, never mind how cliche it might be. So I also like the music in this film and uh, you know, open uh, several, uh, you know, several songs. I uh, before okay. watching this film, I never heard. Okay, yeah. And you watch this film with your mother? Uh, no, no, I watched it by myself. Oh, by yourself. Yeah, we were just talking about music. Music, I understand. Yeah. Henrik, because I know that you have also some touch to Russian films, what are some of your favorite Russian films? <laughs> well, my kind of a go-to director when it comes to Russian film, I guess, would be Andrei Tarkovsky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which in film and in direction is kind of a completely opposite to our today's movie or to Yolki in any way. Like we are talking extremely heavy movies in my picks. I uh, have uh, one question to Henrik. Uh, have you ever seen USSR movie? Not Russian movies, but old USSR movies. You know, to give you uh, another movie from that era, I have seen the uh, Potemkin. 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 Yep. Potemkin. It's uh, 
It's a movie or it's a name of director or a character? It's a movie. It's from 1925. Silent film. Yeah. Ah, let me see one moment. Так. It's Broninosets Potemkin, maybe? Most likely, yeah. I have no idea how to pronounce the name in any other language than in Finland. Uh Uh-huh. What are your favorite movies, Jana, from Russia or uh, USSR? So I can't say that uh, I like mostly uh, USSR, Russian or European or American movies. I really don't like Fantastic. I really don't like a lot. Okay. And uh, the others uh, don't have uh, my favorite film. I like a lot of films, really. Like... Um, for example, uh, film, its name Durak of this film, uh, it's uh, about politics, about economic in Russia, you see. And due to this film, you can see the real situation, what is uh, happening inside uh, small Russian towns uh, in uh, government uh, apparatus. Um, I, I have seen a few films. I've been kind of a fan of the films of Sergei Bodrov's movies, oh, for example, yeah. Prisoner of the Mountains from 96, I think it's called Kavkaski Plenik, something like that. Yeah, right, you are. Uh, Sergei Bodrov is also a great person in Russian movie. I'm really upset uh, remembering the situation in um, mountains, yep. Yeah, the, uh, his son died in an avalanche, right? Yeah. Sergei Bodrov. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really pity situation. Uh, he is a great director. Uh, if uh, we uh, talk about uh, such a films, um, Brat in Russian, in Russian language, yeah? Yeah. Brat, Brat 2, Siostre. I've seen those. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> a great film. So for any, any time, any time. Also, I've seen Come and See from 1985. It was uh, called Idi Smotri. Maybe not so well-known film, but it has really good ratings, and I enjoyed it a lot. It's a war-based movie. Yeah, it's about Nazi war crimes and them attacking some villages in Russia, and kind of the a- aftermath. It's it's almost like a horror movie. Like I will see it. I will see it. It's really interesting for me. <laughs> Great. Thanks a lot, Jana, for joining us. I think we could go on for hours and hours more, but maybe you'd be happy to join us sometime later. <sighs> So with uh, great pleasure, Kari, thank you for such an interesting conversation. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. And uh, Happy New Year for listeners. Happy New Year for Jana. Happy New Year for Henrik. And how do you say that in Russian? The Novim Godom. Thanks, Novim Godom. Happy New Year for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. So, Henrik, we have done 21 episodes at this point it's been a great pleasure with this episode we finish the year 2018 and i hope we will be doing 21 more and hopefully even more than that next year so here's to 2019 yeah if our busy schedule kind of still holds up when it comes to recording these episodes there should be a boatload of episodes coming from us the next year yeah i've already (laughs) taken a look at the recording calendar that you have posted and, and oh boy the film we are going oh to boy. kick off the next year <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and considering i'll be working two works starting next week if everything works out correctly i'll be basically working three works including this podcast oh, oh busy man sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'll do my best Anyway, thanks a lot for everyone. I will let you go, Jana, and uh, see you later. Yeah. Take care. Thank you, guys, one more time. Yep, thank you. Bye-bye, Henrik. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye. So it was the end? Yeah, that's the end. (laughs) Oh. Thanks a lot.